Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Glenn Hall Taylor's frightening suspense thriller. Terror in the Night. Starring Mel Torme. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of... The Zero Hour. Brought to you by the makers of General Motors Parts, by the State Farm Insurance Company, by Dial Soap, and by the makers of Contact on Mutual Radio. That is what happens when you use dial soap. It starts right out with a clean, fresh scent that's like nothing else. To get you going clean and fresh. Dial washes away the cause of odor on your skin. You just can't buy a better deodorant soap than Dial. And that's saying something. Mariposa, California, stands a Rococo Victorian house, a relic of the gold rush days of the last century. The house once rang with the laughter of the Schofield family, but today only Audrey Schofield and her granddaughter Karen are sheltered beneath the steep pitched roof. A ten-foot post stands next to the RFD mailbox. From a bracket is suspended a sign which reads, Tourist Accommodations. In summer, Audrey and her grandmother derive a comfortable income from tourists. But this is the fall season, and on this Saturday night, Audrey and Karen are alone. In the living room, Audrey is knitting in a chair before the fireplace. Karen sits staring at the fire. A gentle collie sleeps in the warmth of the hearth. Karen, dear, why are you so glum tonight? It's not a cheerful night. Sometimes the rain is warm and friendly, but tonight it makes the house feel cold and clammy. The way I imagine a tomb for you. Karen, what on earth? Out the window. A man's face. Oh, I don't see anyone, dear. Grandma! Oh, for heaven's sake, child. It's just someone at the door. The same someone who was looking in the window. I'm scared. Oh, nonsense. Probably someone wanting a room for the night. That's funny. I don't see anyone here. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I didn't mean to frighten you. These old eyes, young man. For a moment, they didn't adjust to the darkness out there. May I help you? Oh, I thought you might have a vacancy. Well, as a matter of fact, we do. Well, come on in. Just set your suitcase down anywhere. <laughs> Get away from that suitcase. Hang it stop there. Now, get away. Shoot. Why, why don't you come on in here by the fire, Mr... Uh, uh, Lewis. Uh, Steve Lewis. Uh, I'm sorry I spoke to the dog that way. He, he startled me. I'm Mrs. Schofield. This is my granddaughter, Karen. Oh, howdy, Karen. Hello. Say, this is... This is real nice and cozy. I, I love an open fire. Why, why, why are you looking at me like that? I was wondering why you were peering in the window before you knocked. Oh, well, the house reminded me of one that I saw in an old Boris Karloff movie. I, I thought I'd see something spooky instead of a sweet old lady and a pretty girl. Would you like to put your car in the garage? Oh, well, I have already. How long will you be staying? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Will, will the room be available for a few days? Well, you stay as long as you like. Oh, that's just fine, fine. By the way, I... I haven't told anyone where I'd be. I'd, I'd, 
I just had to get away from everything for a few days. You know how it is. Sir. I'd, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention to anybody that I'm here. I understand. The body has to get away from his troubles once in a while. Mm -hmm. But don't you worry, young man. We won't say anything to anybody. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Now, your room is at the far end of the hall on this floor. Good. I'll, I'll put my suitcase in there right now. Would you like me to fix you a little supper? Oh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, is this the way to the room? Yes. I'll get the key and be right with you. Tell me, Jerry, how come our Mariposa County Sheriff is mixed up in a murder that happened in Stockton? Well, I'll brief it to you, Sam, but you got to keep it out of your paper until I give you the word. Now, to fill you in, this whole mess started in Oakland early this afternoon. A six-foot guy wearing a gray suit knocked over a movie theater in Oakland. He forced his way through the door at the back of the cashier's booth, threatened her with a heavy tire iron. He pocketed his take, made a getaway in the Saturday crowd. And then he apparently commandeered a traveling jewelry salesman's car, forced him to drive him to uh, Stockton. Body was found near there. How do you know all this? Well, we don't have the actual proof yet, but the jewelry salesman's head was bashed in. His body had been dragged into some bushes. In addition, a quarter of an inch fragment of a gray suit material was found on a branch nearby. Now, the murdered man had been robbed, of course. Well, it's fairly evident. We found the salesman's sample case near his body. It was empty. Why do you think he might be in this area? Well, we have a description of the guy. Cashier furnished that. In the glove compartment, we found a new automobile insurance policy number with a make, model, and license number of his car. The owner of a station in Colterville on Highway 49 remembered a guy in a gray suit who got out to get a drink of water to ask about the road to Mariposa. He was driving a car just like the salesman's. I hear the victim was in terrible shape. No, oh, that's an understatement. This guy must be out of his gourd. A sadist or something. He clobbered him I don't know how many times. It's late for us to be washing dishes, but it did my heart good to see the way that young Mr. Lewis cleaned his plate. I wonder what he's got in that suitcase. His clothes, silly. What else? That's what I'm wondering. What else? You saw the way he acted when Angus started sniffing it. My goodness, Karen, that imagination of yours. Angus wasn't imagining. He smelled something he didn't like. And I don't like the idea of us being alone with that man in the house. But we can't turn him out in the rain. I know. I'll call Uncle Nat and ask him to spend the night with us. He'll laugh at you. I'll get him over here. Don't worry. Hello? 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 The phone is dead, Grandma. What do you suppose happened to it? I know what could have happened to it. And I'm going to go find out. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. To your love. But give your allergy to contact. Allergy is our business, too. We know pollen. And we know that any of the 12,000 quarts of air you breathe each day may contain enough pollen to make your eyes itch, make you sneeze, and drip. We also know an ingredient that helps block pollen's bad effects. It's the antihistamine most prescribed by allergy specialists. It's an ingredient in contact. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. To your love. Tiny time pills in one contact keep this antihistamine working up to 12 full hours, all day, all night. Give your allergy to contact. Take contact only when needed, only as directed. Where does today's girl learn to be tomorrow's woman? At the movies? On television? Helen, darling, your floors are so shiny. Yes, John. I used Brand X polish just this morning. Brand X. Helen, will you marry me? Somewhere, 
Between the super sex symbol of today's commercialism and TV's Brand X image, impending womanhood is alive and well. And where is that somewhere? Wherever there are campfire girls. Campfire reaches the girl reaching out for tomorrow and puts a promise before her. The promise of personal development, of friends and fun. The promise of womanhood. Campfire takes today's girl to tomorrow. This. Seems we have a real hot one on our hands. What is it, Jerry? We left at some prints off the sample case we found near the body. Uh, we transmitted them to Washington. Now, according to this teletype, our tire iron of virtuoso is a Harry Hanford, 33, 6 feet, half an inch tall, 185 pounds, black hair, served term for assault and robbery. And here's a topper. Wanted for murder in Houston. Sounds like a charming fellow. Want to take a ride with me? You know me. Anything for a story. Especially if it'll get me a good obituary. No one's reported seeing the car since he left that service station in Colville, though. I think he's gone into hiding someplace since he left, which means it almost has to be this area. So? So I'm going to update the APB that's already out and check out every tourist camp, motel, and guest house from Mariposa to Colville. Let's go. Heavens, Karen, why did you go out in all that rain? My hunch was right. I checked the telephone wires on the side of the house. They've been cut. He did it. I know he did. But why, dear? I don't know why. I only know he is evil. Shh. Here he comes. Oh, pardon me. I, I'll get settled down shortly and I won't disturb you anymore. But I, I have to get something for my car. I, I won't be long. Come, Grandma, quick. Where to? I'm going to look in that suitcase. <laughs> what if he comes back and catches us? He's a... There's his suitcase. Oh, move that chair over here. Good. <gasps> well... Look at all that jewelry. Oh, my. He's just tossed it on top of his clothes. It must be worth tons of money. I wonder what else is in here. Oh. What's this wrapped in his shirt? Whatever it is, it's heavy. There. Well, unwrap it. Be quick. He's liable to get back. <gasps> Look. Oh. There's blood on it. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right, lady. That is blood. It's a man's blood. I killed him. Oh, oh. You don't seem surprised, young lady. Young man, we're not going to let you hide in this house. I, I, I'm going to... And where do you think you're going? Oh, I, I don't know. Let go of my arm, please. And you, young lady, you pick that up and put it back where you got it. I said pick it up, damn it. Shut up. Down, Angus. Quiet. That's yeah, better. Now then, let's all understand each other, okay? Until I'm ready to leave, you'll do exactly as I say, or I, I may just have to show you how well I can handle that tire iron. Oh. That may be another tourist. Uh, I really ought to answer I'll it. answer it. You roll that tire iron up in that shirt again and hand it to me. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to tuck it under my coat while I answer the front door. You didn't think I'd leave it here with you, did you? Thank you. Now, both of you. Both of you be quiet as baby mice. I'll just lock you in here while I take care of our late caller. Coming! Yes? I hate to bother you at this hour of the night, but I saw your sign and hoped you weren't all filled up. Oh, I'm... <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn you down. Oh? There's sickness in the house. Well, I guess I'll just have to push into my Mariposa and find my luck there. Thanks, anyway. Good night. Good night. Mm. 
Well, you behave very nicely. Mm -hmm. hey, sorry I had to turn away some tourist business, but I'm sure you understand. Only too well. Now, look, you must know this can't go on indefinitely. I, I can't stay here forever, and I... Well, I can't very well leave you here. You could kill us. Karen, what a thing to say. Yeah, yeah isn't it? Especially when I have better use for you. What do you mean? Well, nobody will suspect a nice young man like me if I'm traveling with a sweet old lady and a pretty young girl. Especially if I'm driving a car the police aren't looking for. Now then, hand over the keys to your station wagon, get your coats on, and let's get out of here. <laughs> They just don't realize how little a renter's policy costs and how much it will do for them. State Farm agent Ed Axel of Fairmont, Minnesota. And it's hard for people to realize just how much personal property they do have. They forget about the drawers full of different things. So we tell them how they can protect the property that they already have. If they do have a fire or theft, we will be there to take care of them so that you don't have to start over again. They're just shocked to find out that the rates are so low and the amount of coverage that we can give them for that low rate. State Farm Fire and Casualty offers renter's insurance that can protect just about all your personal property for very little cost. A good reason to see your nearby State Farm agent now. And like a good Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Sam. Where is everybody? Oh, they sure been staying away from here tonight. Except for that guy at the end of the counter. Two coffees, Shorty. Anything with it, Jerry? Oh, coffee's fine, thanks. You know, seeing you two together at this hour makes me figure something's cooking besides my chili. Oh, just us snooping, Shorty. Hey, tell me, are there any houses north of here close by that is that take in tourists? Well, there's a good place a few miles north. The uh, Schofield House. Uh, did you say the Schofield house? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me for butting in, but I thought you ought to know that I was there a while ago and got turned down. The fellow that came to the door said that someone was sick. Fellow? You must be talking about another place. There ain't no man lives at the Schofield house, just an old lady and her granddaughter. It was the Schofield house, all right. I saw the name on the mailbox. Uh, what does this guy look like, mister? Well... <laughs> I'm afraid I didn't pay much attention. He was a tall fellow. Had on a gray suit, as I remember. Why? Come on, Sam. Let's get the hell out of here. Into the back seat, Grandma. Come oh. on, come on. In you go. Take your hands off me. You, young lady, get in the front seat. No. I said get in there. Oh. Mama, losing time. I'm sorry Angus had to miss the trip, but a dog is such a responsibility, you know. Wait, there's a car coming. Yeah, I see it. It's slowing to turn in our driveway. Well, that's too bad, because they're going to have to wait for us to drive out first. <gasps> it's the sheriff's car. Oh, dear. Hey, stop! Hold on to your hat, Sam. We may have to fly this thing. Oh, 
got to figure a way to grab him without hurting the old lady and the girl. Hit the reds and siren, will you? Thanks. Can you catch up and force him off the road? Maybe. I don't want to crash him. We're keen in on him. Get that seatbelt fastened just in case something happens. Okay. Now, how about you? In God we trust. 98 miles an hour. You weren't kidding about flying this heap. Another two miles an hour and we will be airborne. Now we've got him. I'm going to pass and crowd him onto the shoulder. Brace yourself just in case I flunk my driver's test. Thank God. Get out of the car with your hands up. Plant them on a car roof and spread them. All right, all right. Take it easy, you dumb pig. You got me. I'll dump them on the floor in the back of my car and you can drive ladies home. And you ladies all right? Yes, thank you. But I'll tell you something. The first thing I'm going to do after I get a good night's rest is take down that tourist accommodation sign. I don't blame you. You know, sometimes a person can be too damned accommodating. Okay, creep, let's go. You're probably well aware of the advantages of a well-tuned car in helping you obtain better gas mileage. A well-tuned car can run more efficiently, more economically. If all cars were properly tuned and operating efficiently, we could save millions of gallons of gas. To help you evaluate your car's efficiency, your participating GM dealer has two new energy checks available. One is an economy checkup that includes an engine diagnosis along with several other inspections to see if your car is up to specs. The other is an economy tune-up to help give you a smooth running engine that performs efficiently. Making the most out of the gasoline around is one of our country's basic challenges. It's important to you and to us at General Motors. That's why we're inviting everyone to come in now for a GM energy check at a Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, or Cadillac dealer. Get together with him and get more of a run for your money. I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes. Exercise your imagination. And join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. <laughs> Terror in the Night was adapted for radio by Glenn Hall Taylor. Mel Torme was heard as the killer. Featured in the cast were Luke Krugman, Peggy Weber, Sam Edwards, Diane Hale, and Bill Keane. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Colas, directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood for the Mutual Broadcasting System by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System. Oh.